And for this, of course, we need people. It's all about people in the end, like everything else. It's all about people. And uh, we need everybody across Europe working across this, both from the technology side and also the, the, the service side, the, the, the people working directly with citizens with services, to actually understand how you get there and how we, how, we, how we get the systems to work together so that they can talk together, talk with each other, and actually deliver what the citizens need uh, so that they have, to have the same experience with an administration as they do when they shop. That's it. We talk about in many member states or in many countries, they talk about, well, not many, but New Zealand, for example, talk about the trans transparent uh, administration, the transparent government or the invisible government. I think that's quite beautiful because it actually says what we're all about. But it's things should just happen to citizens. It should be easy. It should be proactive. And this is actually what we're talking about when we talk about interoperability. It sounds very technical, but it's really about getting the best for, for people in the end. And we also have to work together to get there. So it's really about what we do for people and with what, how we do it together, cooperate to get there. But in order to do all this together uh, from the people's side, we also have to have the skills needed. And we have a huge skills gap in Europe uh, and across the world when it comes to digital. We miss uh, um, uh, around one million uh, digital experts in the labor market today in Europe. And 35% of the workforce has no digital skills or have no digital skills, if we talk about individuals. So, um, and that is, of course, an ob a significant obstacle to getting where we want to be for the European economy and for, for, for what citizens need. So we need to train people. People need to be trained and retrained, actually, uh, uh, for the digital transformation. And here, the digital, the, the public sector is no exception to this because the public sector drives a lot of this, uh, of this uh, transformation. Uh, that's why we think it's so important to work directly with public sector across Europe and to emphasize this. And of course, we need it across the, the scale. It's not only, as I said, the, the, the IT workers, the, the IT savvy people, but it's also the business people, the, the policy people, the, 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 the managers, the polit politicians need to know what we can achieve and what we need to in order to, to, uh, to get there. And this is why we were organizing this winter school. So the next three days will be about the importance of interoperability and its role in the digital transformation of the public sector. Uh, there are loads of obstacles, of course, like for everything, uh, to interoperability. You have them at legal, organizational, technical, semantic level. And we're going to discuss a bit uh, how to remove these obstacles. How, what can you do to, to, to affect them? Uh, because obstacles and roadblocks are there to be taken away, actually, or overcome. That's, uh, that's uh, our job in many, uh, many different uh, contexts. Find the obstacle and get it out of the way. Uh, you will learn how the European interoperability framework helps us overcome these barriers because there is a very practical and, and, and a concrete toolbox from, uh, from, well, you will see it during, during these days. You have frameworks, you have assessment methods, you have really concrete tools that can help us in this work and why not use what is there. Uh, and you will um, get familiar with some of the concrete solutions that are also uh, proposed by the ISA Square program that is working with interoperability uh, for many years now and directly together with member states who have influenced the tools, who have actually helped shape what is there so that it's useful to, uh, to the concrete uh, situations. So I'm, I'm really very happy to see this room so full today. Uh, and you are coming from all over Europe, but also beyond Europe, which is an uh, extra added value for us. Uh, we also have in the room very experienced practitioners, uh, people who have done this for a long time, who do research on it, and who are practicing in the daily life. And we have students, new students, actually entering into this, uh, onto this journey uh, today. Um, and we also have uh, a number of students from the uh, Erasmus Mundus uh, Pioneer Master Program uh, with us among the students here today, which is also very exciting. Um, now, uh, all of you have a big stake in digital transformation. So, and that's what we're counting on for these days, how you can exchange better together. Uh, for us, for many of us, uh, we also have a vested interest in this because many of us will be retired when you are, many of you are the next leaders for this digital transformation. I will retire in three and a half years. 
Um, so, please, please stay, stay on board, <laughs> get going, and get us there, uh, and keep getting us there uh, going forward. Um, now, what really makes this uh, event unique is what I was just saying, the cross. Uh, we call the, um, our digital strategy for the Commission the co-everything strategy, because we're in it together. All aspects of digital transformation, we're in it together. We have to design, we have to shape, we have to create together, and finance together, and be accountable together, etc., etc. because it's also about decision making. Here, this is about cross-domain and cross-sector, but also cross-generational, if you look around the room. And uh, for the students, uh, please, uh, you will learn a lot during these days, but please also use your fresh eyes to see what you think should be happening and what is the way forward. And to those of you who have done research, are very experienced in the area, please bring your wisdom and knowledge, but please also be open to be provoked and challenged, because this is how together we, we actually uh, create the disruption and the, the, the evolution and the transformation that is needed going forward. That's how progress works. Uh, so I'm sure that you will all event, uh, enjoy this event, uh, the three days. Today you will talk about the current interoperability landscape in Europe and the tools we have to improve it. Tomorrow will be dedicated to the near future and the use of new technologies such as artificial intelligence or blockchain in new public services. And the last day, you will have more forward-looking discussions about the future of digital transformation. So, a very interesting program. I wish you all the best uh, in your uh, discussions. I hope they are insightful and provoking and, uh, and actually bring us forward. Um, and I hope that this is uh, the first in a series of many winter schools to come, uh, dealing with the same topic so that we keep this going. But, uh, Building this road forward requires a lot of effort. So for that, I also thank you for being here. And again, I want to thank the University of Leuven for, for, for co-organizing this together with us because it's so important, this uh, uh, co-everything effort uh, actually bringing us forward to uh, what we need to be doing for Europe and for the rest of the world, with the rest of the world as well. So thank you very much for being here. I wish you a very uh, good and enjoyable three days together. Thank you. Thanks, Gertrude. So now we will have some uh, more words about uh, the Academy by Natalia. I was tell also for those who are looking for Wi-Fi is on the back of your badge. Hello. So good morning, everybody. So I'm Natalia Vistimuño, and I'm the head of the interoperability unit. I miss interoperability. Uh, we could have launched a challenge to count the number of times that uh, interoperability will be uh, mentioned to, uh, in these three days, but okay, I think uh, we, we don't need, it will be many times. Um, so indeed, uh, there is the interoperability unit and we said, well, let's do an interoperability academy too. Um, now, so we will talk a, a lot about interoperability. You will uh, learn a lot on how we understand interoperability, and you will see that it covers many, many areas, and that is not as technical as the world looks like uh, at first approach. I will also give uh, later in the morning uh, more details on the ISA Square program, so you will know almost all about uh, the program. And in fact, the, the ISA Square program and its predecessors, you will see a long story about that, uh, have already built a lot of interoperability solutions, being it frameworks or, or uh, software, guidelines, and, and so on. And uh, what we saw is that you can build the tools, but uh, you need also to learn how to use them. So uh, the uh, learning on how to use them or how to, to make them evolve is as important as having the tools, and you need that to have the take up of, of the work you do. Um, so there was already a lot of material uh, available, like uh, um, guidelines, the frameworks, explanations. We did a lot of workshops, webinars, uh, videos. There was a lot of things there, and we say, okay, this is like very unstructured, perhaps we could put that in a more structured way and accessible. 
So that's why we thought, okay, perhaps we can do a catalog of all the material we already have on interoperability and interoperability solutions. So we counted, we already have like more than 200 resources. So it's not that we are starting really from zero. Um, so that's how the Interoperability Academy started. Uh, but then we said, okay, perhaps the catalog is kind of, uh, I will not say old fashioned or, well, not uh, new enough or not interactive enough. We need something where we can also um, uh, make it available easier. So we thought about having a platform, an e-learning platform. So the idea is that all this material will be accessible uh, as we say also one of the principles in the interoperability, you will learn more about is on the open and open source and accessibility. So that's why we will also put everything in a e-learning platform so it's accessible to anybody. Uh, but this is also a bit like a one way learning because you put it there and then people say. So I say, the people here, <laughs> they, they, they thought that perhaps we need something which is more interactive as uh, for the moment you have not talked too much but you will have the opportunities to do so. Uh, but that's why uh, the idea of having a, a winter or summer school uh, was born because we thought that it was very interesting to have this learning experience but bidirectional or multidirectional because uh, as Gertrude said, we have here very, uh, people for, for very, very uh, wide uh, um, experience or uh, students, and I think this is uh, what will enrich a lot our discussions. And um, I hope this will really be uh, inspiring for all of you and that uh, everybody will take out from the, these three days a lot to continue afterwards. So this is really key, and as uh, Gertrude indicated, be provocative, be really challenge the ideas and uh, try to look at the things from a different perspective and also see, okay, what can be done next? So we have done already a lot, but how we can shape the world for tomorrow? Uh, because interoperability is really key in that. So really, um, I hope you will you have uh, a lot of rest before coming so that <laughs> you can uh, work intensively here. Um, so we did a win, uh, yeah, we, I, I talk about summer school, I was always thinking summer school, well, finally it's a winter school, uh, but thing is uh, close to the Christmas market, so after a very <laughs> intense discussions, uh, here you can always go to the to the Christmas market to rest a bit. So tomorrow you will be back uh, ready to, to to start the discussions again. Um, so now, well, as I said, uh, Jupe and George, uh, I would like to really thank them because if we are here, it's because of them. They will explain much more on how this was born. But uh, so first, really thank you to both of you. And uh, so now the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Gertrude and Natalia, for these kind introduction words. Uh, it's now my pleasure to introduce you, uh, my dear uh, Vice Rector from KU Leuven, Bart Rijmakers. The floor is yours, Bart. Dear honorable guests, dear colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, dear students, in former times, it was clear when we were making these kind of um, announcements, uh, when we were uh, addressing the students, they, they were the younger ones among us. Today, it's less clear in, time of, in times of uh, lifelong learning. We're all students, so ladies and gentlemen, dear students, it's the same. <laughs> Let me assure you, I won't talk about interoperability or digitalization since you are the experts, not me. And I was asked to say a few words about KU Leuven. But as was indicated already, we are slowly preparing ourselves for our 600th anniversary, so you will understand that I won't go into details. <laughs> but perhaps I can say a few things about uh, KU Leuven and Europe, European Union, European Commission. Because what I think is important to tell you, both for students here from Leuven, but also for you as a larger audience 
from Europe and beyond Europe is that we can tell you that there is a long-standing tradition of close cooperation between KU Leuven and Europe. And I was um, um, draw my attention to this about two years ago when I was asked to open up a colloquium on the honorary degrees that were awarded to Konrad Adenauer and uh, uh, French politician Schumann in 1958 by KU Leuven. And as you all know, 1957, we had the treaties of Rome. And so just one year later, we were already awarding these two important people in the foundation of the European Union. Just to indicate to you that Europe is not something which, which was recently uh, very uh, important to us, but right from the start. I could even say that in, these, in all those years, in all those decades, Europe and KU Leuven were closely connected to each other. And when I was referring to these honorary degrees in 1958, I could also refer to the honorary degrees we, are, we have been awarding to people like Roy Jenkins. I was uh, the former president of the European Commission. I was a young student when he was here in, in Leuven to get this uh, degree. And we were all amazed that the president of the European Commission of that moment was willing to come to Leuven. And I could go till very recently when uh, Commissioner Vestager was awarded an honorary degree in Leuven. This, this is, of course, you can say this is symbolic indeed, but it's also an expression of our um, uh, appreciation and our faith into the European idea and into the European Commission. We are still convinced that the European project is more than worthwhile and that it deserves our attention as academics, your attention <laughs> as being involved in many aspects of the European Union. When I was talking about the long-standing tradition, um, I'm not only referring to honorary degrees, as important as they may be, but I would also draw your attention to some of our leading colleagues who were involved in the European project. I refer to the late Professor Walter van Gerven, who was Attorney General at the European Court of Justice, but who was one of the leading professors here in Leuven and who was someone who was really convinced of the idea of a jus commune, a common law for Europe. And of course, I can also refer to the present uh, president of the Court of Justice, Professor Lenaerts, uh, who is, uh, I think, among the leading academics here in Leuven in proposing and promoting the European idea. Of course, you could say, these are lawyers, these are people from the law faculty. You are, I suppose, from faculty of social sciences or faculty of engineering or faculties of digital information. Um, it's not just a faculty of law, although we are here at the faculty of law, but it's uh, something which is uh, common in all faculties, and especially I would like, like to draw your attention to what the faculty of social sciences has accomplished. Um, also, uh, earlier on this year, we were celebrating the 30th anniversary of our program on European Studies. European Studies is a program that is attracting about 200 students each year here in Leuven. And um, European Studies is, I think, quite a successful program where people from abroad and from Europe are studying not only um, European institutions, but also European a history and European culture. Because we are convinced here in Leuven that the European idea, that the European project <coughs> is about institutions, of course, it's about legislation, it's about informatics, it's about all these things, but it's also about a general culture, about a general history, a common history that is uh, combining us. We were celebrating the 30th anniversary of our program in European studies um, in, uh, early in October we were also signing a memory of understanding with the Europa College, Collège d'Europe, here in Bruges, eh, uh, on a close cooperation between the Collège d'Europe and KU Leuven. Also indicating that here in Leuven, every opportunity to cooperate closely with different um, members and different departments of Europe is indeed very important to us. And this is 
within a faculty of law, but also within a faculty of social sciences, faculty of arts, faculty of economics, name it. I think that almost any, not to say every faculty, every discipline within our university has this European spirit, this European openness. I also would like to draw your attention that recently, and I think it's quite a new phenomenon, we have opened up three funds oriented immediately towards Europe. I won't enumerate them all, but it's very interesting to see that among our alumni, among our students, among the friends of KU Leuven, there are an important number of people who want to, to add, who want to, to um, be helpful in promoting this European idea, also by giving us financial support to create new chairs, to create new initiatives related to Europe. And especially, and I think that's important to mention here, these new initiatives are all oriented towards promoting the European idea among students at secondary schools, among journalists, among politicians. I think this is something which is very valuable to all of us. That is, the Europe, we are convinced, and I think I, I shouldn't convince you, of course, we are all convinced about the importance of the European Union, but at the same time, I think we are all aware that this idea, that this project should be communicated much more in order to get legitimization for this uh, European idea. I think it's a wonderful occasion to have here students and civil servants from the European Union, from different um, organizations, to reflect, to discuss, to become interactive yeah. um, in the next few days. I already heard that you were invited to the Christmas market here in Leuven. I can give you a few other suggestions if you'd like. <laughs> Come and see me afterwards. I think Leuven is a marvelous town, not only because of the university, but as you will see, the university and the town of Leuven are closely intertwined. And so if you ask me where can we find the university, I, my answer would be something like, Look around here at, uh, in Leuven, you will see that university and town are, I won't say almost the same, but for the last 600 years, we were developing both in good understanding. So you will have plenty of, of opportunities to discuss interoperability. I won't talk about it. Well. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, but you will also have the opportunity to enjoy the city of Leuven, University of Leuven, the intellectual environment as you can find it here. And so I wish you a very successful, a very fruitful um, winter school here in Leuven. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Bart Rijmakers. Uh, it's now my pleasure to introduce you the Dean of the Faculty of Social Sciences, Steven Egermond. Steven, the floor is yours. Dear participants, dear guests, there are many of you. That's, uh, that's always nice to see. It is also my pleasure to welcome you to this, uh, to this winter school. And to welcome you to this winter school means welcoming you to the Faculty of Social Sciences. The Faculty of Social Sciences is the largest social science institute in Belgium. Quality rankings show we hold the top 10 position within the social sciences of continental Europe. In 1971, the Faculty of Social Sciences was established at KU Leuven as an independent institute for social, social scientific research and education. So in 2021, we will be celebrating our 50th anniversary. As from now on, we consider you to be part of our faculty's international network, I hereby, dear participants, invite you to our birthday party in 2021. Our, obje our objective is to be a scientific institute with an impact on its immediate and wide environment. One priority, of course, is to expand the fundamental scholarly knowledge on the diff different disciplines housed in the faculty. But closely tied to that is another priority to be at the service of society. That's something we attach great importance to. As an academic teaching institute, for instance, we attach great importance or we consider it a core task, <coughs> uh, as well as a privilege, of course, to achieve an immediate and profound impact through our educational programs. In addition, we are committed 
to the idea that many of our studies, much of our research, are such that they can be transitions into implementation, policy, or application. What you will experience today in the next few days is an excellent illustration of this mission. Our faculty's way of working is to connect perspectives and practices. A number of key themes run through our faculty's disciplines and research units. The Faculty of Social Sciences strives to make an important contribution to the study of such themes as inequality, sustainability, poverty, peace and conflict, governance and democracy, citizenship, and not least, digital transformation. Several parts of this interconnected research agenda are clearly visible in our pioneer program, the Erasmus Mundus Joint Master Degree on Public Sector Innovation and E-Governance. All of these together, the Faculty of Social Sciences, our research agenda, the renowned uh, Public Governance Institute within the faculty, as well as our pioneer program, all serve as a backdrop of this winter school. And together it is what makes me proud to welcome you and what makes me confident that this will be an inspiring winter school. Perhaps it will make you even open to the possibility of returning to this university. I do hope that the city, which is a marvelous city, as I was just mentioned, the faculty and the university will have another group of ambassadors when this winter school is over. I wish you a pleasant, interesting winter school. Welcome and enjoy your time here. Thanks for uh, your nice introductions. So <clears throat> now we will go through, explain a bit, uh, I mean, the, what, who we are and uh, what we did and the program of the school. So it's a program explanation I will uh, share with uh, you. So this is an outline of the presentation. This is who we are. So uh, I will give the floor to, to uh, you to explain the Public Governance Institute. Uh, I will after mention what we are, how we are structuring the commission as a bit and after the pioneer and the detailed program will come after. So, Joop, you're the first. Thank you very much, George. Um, who are we? We are more than 100 st uh, people, students or colleagues uh, here for the next three days. And I like, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm a, I'm a professor here, I like interaction. So, therefore, I would like to know who, could you raise your hands, please? Who is from the public sector? Could you raise your hands? Wow, quite a big group. Welcome to Leuven. <laughs> academia, who is from the academia? Could you raise your hands? Not so many. Oh, we have to work harder. <laughs> good, very good. There, it's, I see it also. <laughs> students, dear students, where are you? Well done. Welcome to Leuven as well. And then I also raised who's from the private sector. Okay, a little bit. Also there we have to work a little bit. But welcome very much to Leuven as well. And then others. Is there someone who doesn't feel representative? I see the people in the back. Good morning. Hello. Good. Uh, I will ask you later where you are from. Good. So I, it's my privilege to introduce you in the next two, three minutes, very briefly, the KU Leuven Public Governance Institute, which I already st stated here, is an international oriented and interdisciplinary research institute that focuses on the various aspects of public governance in the widest sense. It's part of the KU Leuven of Faculty of uh, Social Sciences, as already was introduced by the Vice Rector and the Dean. And it is founded in 1998, but we are much longer exist. We already had already some starts up in the 1960s. So we are a group of the Public Governance Institute of 45 FTE, research fellows, PhDs, and supporting staff. I'm delighted that my dear uh, director, Annie uh, Hondegem, is here among us. And I'm very happy that you are here, Annie, this morning. And I'm also privileged, feel privileged that my dear respected colleague, uh, Professor Bukat, will give a key lecture or keynote on Friday morning. Uh, Professor Steven van der Wallen, he will, give, he will join us in the panel discussion. So we see we are quite active, including me and also Professor uh, Truisteen, who also will join you sometimes during this event. And then, but actually... It's nice, but the real engines are those people there also sitting somewhere in the public, is Maxime Santillon, 
Lotte Lanen, Stijn Wouters en Inge Vermeulen. Thank you very much on behalf of Keo Leuven what you have done for us. Enormously appreciated. So, what's our task and focus areas of public governance? We're doing interdisciplinary research, yes. We have in our team not only uh, public administration scientists, we have lawyers, we have uh, economists, we have didactics, we have engineers. So a nice bunch of people of expertise we think at the, now, at the moment is necessary in this main of public governance. And what we do, we uh, do fundamental research, but also applied research. Also what we do is doing a, a research-based education and training for students as well as civil servants. And last but not least, we are delighted to also deliver on a very frequently basis uh, public services and provide public advice. Our group consists of three big pillars, clusters we call it, one on politics, citizens and policies, and the other cluster on government, organization and HRM, and the other cluster on management of information, performance and finance. So, who are we targeting as, uh, as a group, as Public Governance Institute? Students, of course. And because they are from our master course, our bachelor courses, our training courses. We are also aiming the international academic community through our articles, papers, and conferences. And very important target group for us as Public Governance Institute are the policy makers, the public servants at different levels, at, at different administrative levels, from local level to even the global level. And of course, last but not least, we try to uh, uh, interact also with citizens for our, uh, with, uh, to in, in order that they participate in the public debate. Now, yeah. now it's my turn, so I will talk about who we are. Uh, so the to go from the, I would say from the top, uh, I will start with the Commission. So Gertrude already, <coughs> excuse me, Gertrude already introduced that uh, she's, it's the department responsible for providing the digital service for the commission. So from the desktop installation to developing systems from uh, in all types of policies, but as well, or part of the mission of the, of the Directorate General for Informatics is also to help modernizing public administration in Europe and supporting interoperability. So Gertrude is our Director General. She's helping that with Mario Campolargo, a Deputy Director General. And then in this, uh, there are different directorates. There is one directorate which is more oriented towards the external. Uh, it's the Directorate of Data Service uh, with uh, Emanuele Baldacci. So Emanuele will be here on the third day, participating to the panel and delivering a keynote and is uh, responsible for the digital services of public administration. And in particular, there are also data information management, the trans European systems, developing the so-called Connecting Europe facility building blocks. And as well, uh, this is a directorate who is responsible of the interoperability uh, um, ISA Square program. So we have three uh, units, we have the data services, uh, who are uh, uh, responsible of all the data management, the data strategy, uh, interoperability. You already met Natalia, and she will tell you everything you wanted to know about our work. And trans-European system, which are more working on the safe building blocks and collaboration system in the Commission. So this is how we are uh, in our unit. So now if I go even uh, at the level, the name of this uh, uh, academy, so we were not very original, we say, okay, we are interoperability <laughs> unit, so uh, let's do an interoperability academy. We're thinking ISA Square would have been nice, but since we are at the end of the program, it's maybe uh, not, it's better to use a word that will last, and we know that interoperability will last for many years uh, uh, still. So <clears throat> our activity is to really to support an holistic approach to uh, interoperability across border at all levels, and in cooperation with member states. So we have a number of forums where we interact with member states to implement and monitor the ISA Square program and the, the, the successor program. And there will be tomorrow we will discuss about this and support the implementation of the European Interoperability Framework as well. You will have all the details uh, after with Natalia. So this is our unit, so we have all the people. Uh, that are in the unit. Uh, we have different profiles. You can see as well 
the, the people in charge of the different files. I take the opportunity to thank, because Natalia uh, thanked me and you, but uh, without the help of Victoria Calogiro, if you can raise your hand, so please. Uh, so this is Victoria, she's doing also a, a big amount of work to, for, for this, so she's also uh, managing the Interoperability Academy, and I want to take the opportunity to thank her for all the work she's doing to support as well. But it's not only about digit, so we, uh, we are not alone. So we have also, and today we have uh, the DG of internal market <laughs> industry, known as DG Grow, uh, that is responsible of the single digital gateway and uh, e-procurement activities. We have also our colleagues from the communication network containing the technology called as Connect, short word, who are, they have the e-government unit, they're responsible of the CEF program, they have also dealing with smart cities, so they're doing a lot also in that. We have the structural reform, ser uh, reform support service, where they're dealing a lot with technical assistance to member states on digital government. We have the publication office, we have also have representatives today responsible of semantic aspect, vocabularies and e-procurement and the Joint Research Center, with who we, we, we worked also closely uh, working on digital transformation of government. But it's not only the Commission, we collaborate as well a lot with uh, uh, member states, so through the different committees, uh, we have uh, digitalization agencies, ministers, so, uh, and we have some of them today, we have also animating in, in uh, digit, there is also this CIO network of member states, so trying to find strategic direction on how to improve uh, digital public services. And we are also trying to reach as well regions and cities because we know that, I mean, the structure of the different state does not allow to have a, a top down. So we know that in certain countries it's better to go on a bottom up approach. So we're also collaborating and uh, having some collaboration. And it's not only uh, the public sector, we are also universities and uh, research institutes, so we collaborate with researchers. We have researchers uh, in many of our, uh, of our uh, uh, work, contracts we do, professors such as you, and uh, students. So uh, we work with students because it's, I would also, it was really a pleasure for us, and uh, thanks to Adrian here, who is there, a former alumni who <laughs> brought us the trainees from KU Leuven, from, uh, who were, I hope, very satisfied. So we work also, we take experience or uh, the insights from students. And it's very important. It has been a very good experience. And uh, we, we're really looking forward to continue that experience. And now, since we're talking about students, I will pass the floor to you. Thank you very Thank much, you also. George, for your, um, yeah, for your interaction. Um, it's my privilege now to introduce you the Pioneer. And Pioneer stands for Erasmus Mundus, Master of Science in Public Sector Innovation and E-Governance. Quite a mouthful, but that is where Pioneer stands for. It's a two-year, and I would say an exciting, master program organized not only by KU Leuven, but by the University of Münster, Germany, and Tallinn University of Technology. The first cohort started in 2017, 2019. And my dear students who are here in this uh, lecture room, they are already from the third cohort. So our rationale behind this course is the following. We think, and we also, it was also highlighted by the previous speaker, e-governance and digitalization form the core of, uh, in the public sector for the future as an important, a vital trend for the future of public sector in Europe, but also worldwide. And therefore, the mission is uh, to deliver, to uh, educate ex uh, uh, students that leads to experts who combine knowledge of public administration and public management on the one hand, and on the other hand, the information systems and e-government on the other hand. So it's a very nice trip that they have to, these students have to work. Besides, they have to study very hard, of course, and they have to also pass all the exams, which, fingers crossed, that will succeed. But after, when they succeed, then they go to Münster, Germany, and they spend there also quite some significant time in Germany. And then they go to Tallinn in uh, Estonia. And then they also know more about e-governments. Here, we all aim 
that the students get more knowledge about, e uh, about public administration, public administration science. Then in Germany, they learn more about information systems, more the technical aspects, and the wonderful places in Tallinn where both disciplines, both expertise matched, come together, and there they will learn more about e-governance and digital transformation. And then last but not least, they have to do a thesis uh, somewhere in, uh, with these universities. Where do these students come from? From everywhere around the world. Just to name a few, Mexico, France, USA, Nigeria, Peru, Ukraine, Canada, Germany, everywhere. And what's the fascinating thing is what's the background of these students? They are not only, they are not only from public administration science, they are from business uh, sciences, from engineering, uh, from administration science, from law, from information science. So a nice bunch of people who would like to work together with multiple disciplinary to, get, to learn from each other and where we, I also learn from them and that we can work from them, with them. So where do they uh, go? Because they have part of it is very impressive where those students go to do the internship is they go, for example, to in, uh, academic institutions like the EGOF Lab of Stockholm, University of Albany, Taltech, the University of the Technical University of Tallinn, but also to prestigious places from the public sector, UNICEF, OECD, GRC, uh, French Diplomatic Corps, but also they are also going to the private sector. So not only in the public sector, but also in the private sector. I would like to ask my dear students from Pioneer to stand up. Please stand up. <laughs> Wow, very, very impressive. <laughs> I start with you, Matthias. Uh, your name and your country, please. Uh, my name is Matthias, and I'm from Canada. Welcome. Uh, my name is Sandra, I'm from the Pakistan. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> we'll have more of these sessions, that interaction we need to have during the next days, of course. So then these are just pictures. Where we are, here they are all happy. See them on the picture there. It is the first cohort, the second cohort, and you are all now familiar with these people, this bunch of people, exciting people, inspiring people, and I would like now to give the floor to you, George. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now, here it's just because this is about the institutions, uh, different uh, organization meeting together, but it's, there is also uh, human history. So this slide is just to show how I came to know you. So I was in a DG Connect, I was a project officer managing African projects and it was, in fact it was related to public services because it was about land registration and about public sector innovation because it was a project that was using drone artificial intelligence and uh, a lot also with, uh, I mean, engaging with the people. So this is how we met together. Uh, Joop was on the side of K11. I was the part I was uh, signing off uh, to pay for the grants. But it was, yeah, <laughs> so it was, and uh, we had the first review here in Leuven as well. So I, I'm familiar also with, uh, with, with this place. And this is how we came to met, and we met again, and we, I mean, it was a very good collaboration, and we, I'm very happy also to give this human aspect of our collaboration, where it's usually where it starts, usually. Thank so, you. And now, the winter school objectives. Uh, so here it's to have participants, so the, the, the objective, when we had the idea, when we, we met, so there was a discussion about Pioneer, we had the students, etc., and say, so we have the academy, we have K11, we have students, so why not make a winter school? And this is, we say, what if we do a winter school, so it would be to mix these uh, different profiles and to have <laughs> participants, so with practical aspects, because we have the practitioner, but also theoretical insights from the academia, and to develop an in 
to, to implement interoperability solutions, to be familiar what is the interoperability framework, and how you could use this as an instrument to help you to, be, to build actual solutions in the future, and also to use it for your academic work. And as well, to discuss a lot on public sector innovation, and the future of digital transformation. So it's organized, I would say, in three days, if you think. It's, we could even place them chronologically. I mean, the European Interoperability Framework, there is a good way, you say EIF, and we understand what it is. So it's start to learn the acronym because we will be using it a lot. And the ISA Square Program, I would say this is the past and present and the new future. So this is something we've been developed. We will present what we've done and we will show what you will also ask you to tell us what we, we you want to know. The second day will be about public sector innovation, so it's to know from academics, but also from uh, member states and the commission what we plan to do in the near future. So I would say from the commission, it's starting from 2021. We are the Digital Europe program, so uh, we will explain what we plan to do, what are the, the, the ideas, but as well what member states are, to, are, are planning to do uh, from different member states and what the academic perspective on that. And the third day would be about the future. So it's even looking, f uh, the future of digital transformation, maybe to look even forward after we finish this program, what should we start working, I would say after 2030, what should be the, the things, the subject we will need to, to tackle. So as I say, we have uh, the first day, we will have Natalia. So it will be after the coffee break, we'll start everything that you want to know about EIF. We will have also uh, colleagues who are contributing to uh, also policies for public administration. So we have uh, Norbert for the e-government and trust European uh, in the European Commission and Marianne <coughs> Gruben who will be um, work talking about the uh, head of the unit of the digitalization of the single market. We will uh, discuss, uh, present you the single digital gateway, an important, very important piece of legislation. After this afternoon, you will have workshops. So uh, there will be uh, three workshops. There will be the Interoperability Academy workshop because this is something we're starting and we need insights. We need help because we need to know what are the best profiles and it's something that is done for the external. It's not done for, for the commission. We will use it certainly, but we need to know how to shape it. Uh, there will be also uh, another on the EIF, uh, the evolution of the EIF. So now we have the, it's a framework. It's, a set of recommendation, how should we evolve, how sh what should we do with it in the future. And uh, there will be a particular one about the European Interoperability <coughs> Reference Architecture. This will be one session of three hours. The two first, there will be a switch between, there will be a break where you will switch, and this will be more participatory workshop. Here will be a, a lecture. There was a lot of people who are interested as well. So this is the program for this afternoon. You will have people helping you, guiding you to go to the workshop area. The second day would be first we will start with the public sector innovation from, uh, so there will be again Natalia who will discuss, present what we plan to do, what we're doing on public sector innovation in the program, but as well in the future, what we plan, uh, the ideas we have for the future. And after we have three member states, Carmen Kelpipan from Slovenia, Pedro Viana from Portugal, and Frank Lehmann from Belgium. They will explain what are their plans, what they are doing the plans on their respective countries and uh, how we can after find ways to contribute uh, together. In the af uh, after this session, the second part will, will have uh, the point of view of academics. So we have the f Professor Mar Mar Maren Janssen from TU Delft. We have Ines Mergel who will uh, also present from uh, Constance University and uh, Vasilis Kuljolas, uh, head of the IGOV lab in Stockholm. So they will present the point of view there tomorrow. There will be just two workshops and uh, there will be also one full workshop, so the all afternoon and the one where we will, with uh, collaboration from the, the colleagues of the government unit, we will try to see how to link policy objectives with what we plan to do in the future in the Digital Europe program and to get the, the feedback. And the future of digital transformation will be more an academic perspective. Yes. And yes, if yes, you yes, want yes, to yes, say yes. so, but it's uh, very interesting. It's quite well balanced and it will be interesting because the K-11 made a big, uh, a, a big effort to mix the team. So there will be always students, professors, uh, public sectors, private sectors together to discuss, to have a lively discussions. 
And the last day, uh, there will be two keynotes. So the one from our director, Emmanuel Baldacci, who will say a word about the data strategy at European uh, and the importance as well of skills uh, for this. And we have the distinguished professor Gerd Burkhardt who will also give uh, an interesting lecture on the digital transformation yep. and the views on the academic, the latest work on the academic side on this aspect. And after we will have the wrap ups of the workshops, uh, one hour, we have uh, after a panel <laughs> and we will Compared to the program that was published, we will finish, but I think nobody will complain, uh, half an hour earlier. So, uh, and here we will have uh, the panel discussion will be with Emanuele, the Stephen van der Waal, Robert Krimer from Tallinn, and Gianluca Mizuraka from the GRC. And after there will be some closing words. So here, I give you the back to explain where we are. We are in the middle dot, we in the, in the middle, and then we go more to the south, and that's the location of this afternoon, but that will be all inter introduced, explained by Victoria uh, later this, after, this morning. So with this session, I would like to finish. This morning session is open session. First, I would like to give a big applause to our speakers, to Gertrud, Natalia, Ralph, and Steven. Thank you very much that you had the effort to come to the beautiful town Leuven. It was a joy that you were here, and I hope all the best for you in your further career. Thank you very much. Okay.